Oh, what was that? Well, tell me again. Tell me again. That's the secret of getting a girlfriend and creating the ultimate playing wide nation and how to get these timorid space marines. I guess you guys gonna have to find out what he said by watching this video. And for 10,000 likes, we'll do a run as the Mamelukes. Plus, whenever we reach 115,000 subs, my wife's gonna be playing some EU4. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see that happen. The timorids in 1444 are likely the strongest strongest nation in the game. Not only are they by themselves massive, but they have five vassals at the start and all of their vassals they got cores on, with the exception of Sistan and one province out of Afghanistan, as well as they got cores on the entirety of Ajam. And if you're wondering why, well that's because, historically speaking, in 1444 Ajam did not exist. It was simply a short-lived rebellious nation that got crushed eventually. But then again, historically also, the Timurids collapsed after the death of uh, Shakru and the remnants of the Timurids eventually formed the Mughals by going into the Indian parts. That being said, you do have a bit of a tough situation at the start because most of your vassals are close to being very disloyal and you start with a really nice Liberty Desire minus 50% modifier that expires once your starting leader dies. So once this guy dies, they're gonna be really disloyal. So in order to prevent that from happening, we're gonna go for the lenient taxation that offers minus 15 Liberty Desire and subject that automatically makes everybody loyal. We're also gonna give out the strong duchies which gives another minus 10% liberty desire and subjects and that means we can also do this mission timorid leadership. Next up we're gonna get royal marriages with all five of our vassals. Remember that royal marriage means you get an extra minus 5% liberty desire and subjects. We're also gonna summon the diet and go for whichever agenda best suits us. We will be giving out the plus one mana point privilege for all three estates as well as the minus 25% advisor cost reduction privilege for all three again. Grant Dimi liberties as well, guarantee minority rights, and the promote Dimi nobles privilege are good as well. We cannot sell titles because we need at least 10% crownlands, but we will be developing the province of uh, bulk once. Make sure you encourage development beforehand and then afterwards seize crownlands. That means we only get 0.20 autonomy rather than 0.30 autonomy. We're also going to eventually give out the Amir integration policy before we integrate our vassals in 54, so that's in 10 years from now. After you do all this, you should still have a disloyal Transoxiana, but not to worry, we're gonna go to war on the 11th of December exactly with the nation of a gem. Don't forget to also adopt the titles of Wiz Khalifa, Sect Practices, and encourage uh, whatever. We click the button, okay? Just click all the button. We also want to recruit the free company, so we're gonna get a loan in order to recruit the free company. You can set them up in Kerman, so they're a little bit further away from the borders when the war happens. And it is the 11th of December, which means we can attack the nation of Ajam. Make sure you set a city that's easy to get at the start of the war as your main war target. And let's start this out, shall we? You can also assign objectives for your vassal vassals to start conquering. This way your vassals essentially lose their manpower rather than you losing your manpower in this war. I actually never noticed this but no guy has unique sprites and they look quite cool not gonna lie. Time to chase down the Ajami armies over here. We managed to take their capital so all that's left now is to take this uh, other fort that they have here. Oh that's really good. We even get 20 relations with Transoxiana from that event. Yeah, gon die now Luristanen. Looks to me like no guy is about to get pasted an Altenstein. You know what? I actually did not co them, I just realized. So I'm only gonna take the south parts here, as well as all of the money that they can actually offer me. The problem is that their rebels might actually siege this fort before I siege the other one, so then I'm gonna have to come back to this one before I piece them out. And of course they sieged it down, but at least we can take out the entirety of the Ajami army here. Yeah, boys gone dead ski now, eh? And it's time to come back and attack these boys now. Noise looks like we got the entire army available, actually. So I could technically fully annex a jam, even though I don't have the city here, I can still do it. And then if you fully annex a country new for all of their vassals become your vassals. But I don't actually want their vassals because then my vassals are going to be close to impossible to keep in check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this entire deal here, all of Luristan, all of a jam without the two provinces to the north. And I get enough provinces to increase my crownlands and uh, Darya go we went up to 11% crownlands now. Plus, my vassals are a lot more loyal. I got 0% liberty desire in all of my subjects at the moment. Take note, however, that once my leader dies, that's gonna increase a little bit.
bit more. We still have the cores on the gem, so we can attack him after the truce is over. But what's actually going to happen is the nation of uh, Karako Yunlu most likely will attack and fully annex a gem before we manage to finish our truce. Remember to also make full cores out of all the newly conquered lands, as you don't need to spend any admin for this. All you got to do is make them states. So after you've taken care of a gem, the next step is going to be to attack Ladakh and work our way into the Delhi areas since we need to take most of Delhi. What normally happens here is the nation of Sirhin, which starts as the vassal of Delhi, kills them off completely and forms Delhi afterwards, which is exactly what happened right now. Whilst we wait for our claim to finish on Ladakh, we're going to attack Uzbek. They have quite a few cores of our beloved vassal, Transluxiana, and we want to get these cores back from the vile Uzbeki. Oh no, everybody, Shakrur just died, and that means we lost the awesome modifier that we had, and it also means that our guys are going to be a little bit more disloyal, but because we expanded so much, even though they are a little bit more disloyal, they're still not above 50%. And after we take lands from Uzbeks, they're going to be even better. We're going to white piece the nation of Kazan, since we don't really care about them too much, and staying in this war for too long would actually cost us more. Remember this in all of your E4 games, if you're not actually gaining anything from certain wars, just white piece those wars as soon as you can, and the fastest way to white piece is to just occupy provinces and the capital. You don't have to occupy it, you can just siege it down and have some of their lands occupied, which in turn means they will be willing to white piece you. Another vital thing is once you have enough war score to piece out, go for that. You don't need to have 100% unless you really want to take 100%. My case, I don't need that. I just need these provinces here and all the money that they got, and I have more than enough war score for that, so I'm actually going to piece them out now. And by giving back the provinces to Transoxiana, I lower their liberty desire by another 24%. Another great tip is to be situationally aware. I could attack the nation of Ladakh, but I'm about four months away from starting to integrate my vassals. Obviously, it makes a lot more sense for me to integrate my vassals before I attack the nation of Ladakh. 1st of January, 1454, which means we can start the integration process. Remember, like I said before, guys, you need to give the Amir integration policy before you start integrating. This is going to increase the liberty desire of your subjects. I suggest you start with Khorasan, Fars, and with Transoxiana because you do have cores on most of these countries here. Transoxiana is going to take a little bit longer because you don't have cores on the provinces you took from Uzbeks that they got. After you've done Khorasan and uh, Fars, you can start with Afghanistan. Doing this mission gives you an extra 400 ducats, so we are essentially ridiculously rich at this point. Remember to make full states out of the newly added provinces from uh, your integrated vassals. And also remember to lower the autonomy in all of your provinces, as this is going to massively increase your economy, as well as your land force limit and the manpower that you get from these provinces. We also need to see some crownlands. This is going to make a rebellion appear, so be ready for that and be ready to crush these rebels. Luckily for us, they actually appeared quite close to where our army was standing. It is worth it because now we are up to 19.494 crownlands. So that means if we dev up a few provinces, we should get 20% crownlands. In fact, I'm going to do that right now because I need to spawn in the Renaissance, encourage development, and I'm actually going to spawn in Renaissance in the province of Herat because it is paper, so it's a really valuable good. And this already has 16 development, so it's actually going to spawn in the Renaissance a lot faster. There you go. Just deving that a few times, we got 15% and all the way up to 23 by just using the points we had. And that also means we went up to 20.8% crownlands and we got no autonomy debuff anymore. So we're not ready to attack Ladakh, but look at this, Delhi actually guaranteed them. So we're going to have to co-belligerate Delhi. That means we're basically going to be fighting half of the uh, Indian subcontinent in the first war. But it is what it is. RNG Jesus giveth, RNG Jesus taketh away. We need to take the provinces of uh, Doaba and Delhi in order to form the nation of the Mughals. So that's going to be our primary target against the nation of Delhi before we peace out uh, Ladakh. Going to be a little bit complicated getting to the provinces of Bengal, Sindh, and Sang, but we're going to have to find a way there. Hey, we got the city of Lahore. Hey, hey, what a great name, isn't it, everyone? Yes, I am five years old. Let's try and relieve the siege of Kandahar as well. This is our fort, so we're basically fighting a defensive battle here, which essentially means we got the benefit of the terrain, and because of that, we won, obviously. Looks like Bengal is trying to unsiege the lands that we siege down from Ladakh. We can't let them do that because we need to have these lands. We are, after all, going to fully annex them. Try and catch them up. Here, we got movement locked, so that means we are going to be engaging them in the province of Kashmir. They got some
some reinforcements actually, so I need to get some more troops in there. I'm also sieging down Sindh so I can piece them out. Like I showed before, you don't need to actually siege down the entire country. Just a few provinces is enough and start sieging down the capital, White Topizos. All right, now we just got to deal with uh, Bengal's massive army and with Delhi's massive army. We managed to also integrate Transoxiana. So our map color is the greatest out of all the map colors around us. We can do the Indian raid mission here that gives us a Chad Lord of a general and permanent claims on these areas here, which means 25% cheaper to core them up. Remember, regular claims lower core costs by 10% and permanent claims by 25%. One more stack wipe, this time against the nation of Tang, which apparently came to help out its ally, and I even forgot about them being in the war, to be honest. We siege down Delhi, but we still need to kill off their army here. We might be able to trap them up in uh, Upper Doab, or maybe in the province of Panipat. I think Panipat is where the last of the Delhi Mohicans are gonna make their stand. Nope, they got uh, stack wiped in Upper Doab. As I was planning, this was completely planned. Okay, okay, seriously? Still not stack wiped? No, it was stack wiped. All right, that means we can uh, definitely piece them out now. And we can take uh, these provinces, 100%, and we got all the provinces we need in order to form the nation of Mughals, which also means we can now just focus on um, piecing out Ladakh. We are gonna be concentrating development in all of these lands since we wanna lower the cost of coring this up even more. Why don't mind if I do 5% professionalism for 85 ducats is a massive bargain, especially since this means I can take more money from the uh, nation of Bengal. We're gonna go for war reps and cash two in one because they pissed me off and because I had to siege them down. We're also gonna be able to piece out Tsang most likely without even having to fight them because they are getting besieged by another nation that they're at war with. After a few more months, they are now willing to piece us out and that means we can also piece out Ladakh. Oh, what? Unconditional surrender. I've never seen the AI do this. The nation of Ladakh gave us unconditional surrender. Bro, the AI is massively big brain now. Cannot believe this. Wow, I'm so impressed with the latest patch, man. They really improved the AI so much. We actually got so strong that pretty much every single one of our neighbors wants to become our diplomatic vassal. So we could, for example, go to Biapas, improve up to 190 relations with them and get an alliance and then we can just vassalize them without having to go to war with this nation if we want to over that's not the plan right now the plan is to take out baluchistan so we actually get nice pretty borders i am one of those guys that wants pretty borders i hate border girl okay i need to take baluchistan oh uh, Ludi, but you call this a pretty nice uh, borders you be quiet now okay you be quiet i love my rng do we choose one stability or 300 ducats boys obviously we're gonna go for the ducats we also can form the nation of the mughal empire which is probably one of the strongest nations in the game but once we do form that nation we lose access to the timurid missions as well as the claims that the timurids offer us although the moguls do have a pretty good mission tree themselves take note however if you do choose to form the mogul empire you cannot reform any of the other tags here at least for the time being it is time everybody let's also form the nation of the mughalus adopt the new traditions and ambitions the timurid ideas are a little bit more military focused where Whereas the Mughal ideas are much more playing wide and expansion focused than anything else. Overall, I recommend you go for the Mughal ideas though. It did cancel our integration policy, so remember to give this out again. We also can now assign the Rashputs and all the other boyos here. And we have 50% crownlands, which is actually insane. We can give out the Brahmin legitimacy to rule, Brahmin council as well. Establish the Rashput regiments, which are a special kind of unit you can also give out rashput autonomy and for the jains you can give the plus one diplo power so we have all three the plus one mana privileges now and we got 34 percent crownlands that is massive in 1461 not to mention we can also give out the plus 100 governing capacity privilege for all five of these estates so essentially we get an extra 500 governing capacity on top of the 750 that we got right now the mogul missions are insanely great also and they focus both on expanding into the Indian subcontinent as well as outside of the Indian subcontinent with claims on the Indo-Chinese areas, parts of China and other parts of the world. But the most shining jewel of the Mughals is the Mughal D1 which has the assimilation mechanic essentially
essentially for each culture that we assimilate fully, we get specific bonuses. So once we have all the Iranians, we get minus 10 advisor cost reduction, all the Hindustani minus 10 core cost reduction, and so on for basically every culture in the world. Not to mention all of these cultures are essentially as our very own culture once we fully integrate them. So that means once we have all of their provinces, we don't get any malices, they are accepted. Take note, once you do form the Mughals, you get the Indian units and that means you get fire pips from Tech 5 and if you really want to cheese this, we can absolutely crush everybody in the West because of this extra fire pip early on. That's why we're going to focus on Karakoyunlu next, aside from Baluchistan. Let's start with the Baluchi war though, so we can get this ugly border gore out of the way. I actually really like the map color of uh, Baluchistan. Oh, by the way guys, if you want to check this save, you'll find it on my Patreon page. And if you want to see a world conquest as the Mughals, I am doing one where I started as Afghanistan and I conquer all of India by 1500. You'll find a link to that in the description as well. That's the one I'm turning into a world conquest as that one has some extra achievements. I cannot get the true era of teamwork achievement with this one because you have to start as one of the vassals to get that achievement, which is why we started as Afghanistan. By integrating Sistan, we got all of the Afghanistani and the Khorasani people, which means that every Khorasan and Afghan province that we have is the same like our primary culture, so we're not getting any debuffs from having these provinces. Sadly, it's really hard to get military access to get to the allies of Baluchistan, so we're gonna have to sit on them for a few years. We've also had a pretty easy war against this OPM over here, and we're gonna fully annex them. And now it's time for la creme de la creme, the war against the western countries. We're gonna make Mazandran the main target, but we're gonna co-belligerate both Karakoyunlu and Mushasha, because I actually want to take lands from all three of these nations. We also can get a bunch of money by debasing our currency and then lowering the corruption with the government interaction. Excuse me, Mara, what are you doing here sieging my forts like this? How dare you be so aggressive? Looks like Baluchistan is also very aggressive here trying to take me out in Kuhistan, but I'm on to them. I'm really, really on to them, okay? Swipe out their armies. No more Baluchi armies. That might mean that we can, we can, we can annex them finally. 122 216 perfect we can even cancel a core we can amaze bulls and look at these beautiful borders boys i love me some beautiful borders nice and clean completely ignore this area please i believe this is also the last click for us to get renaissance it is indeed sir renaissance is now present in herat you might be wondering what this is well this is the rashput regiment unit a special unit that gets extra morale of armies reinforcement cost reduction and regiment drill loss reduction which is is actually amazing. The amount of Rashput regiments that we can have is based on the amount of land owned by the Rashputs. Right now they only own 7% so we can have 7% Rashputs. We also can expand the Rashputs by giving them an extra 10% fire damage and that is massive especially since we already give out fire damage with our Indian Arquebusiers. So now look at all these bonuses my boyos here have y'all. Time to fully annex the nation of Musha shot not to worry nobody's gonna miss these boys ever i think karakoyunlu just made a wrong turn here they tried to retreat but they retreated in my province next to my armies yo that's obviously instant death i bet these guys are panicking now after i'm essentially occupying half of their country Do you know what i actually don't need the free company anymore especially since they don't have much manpower pool left i'll keep them until after this war is finished i normally send them off into suicide runs so i can drain the manpower pool of the enemy army instead of just this banning them to be fair so we've managed to take tabriz which means we can get the peace deal going we're taking only one province because we're going to be releasing iraq from this province all the money and we're also going to go for humiliation and it's going to be a full annexatio for the nation of mazandaran these lands are actually insanely good not only are they silk but they're also high development and they're really high trade power as well in the province of sari so it's actually vital if you're a part of the persian trade node to get a hold of the Mazandarani lands. So the next war against Karakoyunlu is going to be a reconquest war for our vassal Iraq. After you've essentially unified the Persian areas here and you got your foothold in India, it depends on what you want to do next. If you're going for a world conquest as the Timurids, then I recommend you focus on India so you get your economy going from these lands. Essentially, these are the richest areas of the world and by taking these early on, you can fuel your economy for the rest of the game and especially if you're going for world conquest but whilst you're doing that also continue to expand into Karakoyunluk 
cut off the Ottomans and into the steppe lands. And idea wise, quantity ideas should be your first idea set to help out with the military aspect, followed by admin ideas or diplomatic ideas, depending on whichever path you want to take. And if you're going for one faith, go for religious ideas. If you're not going for one faith, then go for humanist ideas. And remember, if we get 10,000 likes, I'll be covering the Mamluks. And click here for Mughal Conquest of India by 1500. And I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support.